Hey guys, all right, we're going to um, look at the last movement of Opus 22 today. And um, so this is another Rondo movement from um, Beethoven's 32 Piano Sonatas. And it is a work which for sure is more classical. It's, it's more like the early Opus um, two sonatas or even like opus seven um, so this last movement is a rondo movement and uh, you've all looked at this movement and, and uh, completed a worksheet on it um, and so this is one that i really think you could use the term sonata rondo uh, because the middle section um, is definitely um, has a development kind of quality to it. And so we'll talk about that when we get there. But opening A theme is straightforward. Um, unlike the Opus 2, Number 2, and Opus 7, where we saw incipient three-part song form for the A theme, this is more of a uh, parallel double period. So therefore, it would be a one-part song form. And it does have uh, a two-measure extension at the end of the theme and um, the overall key of this is B flat major and so there's a you know clear cut authentic cadence there on tonic uh, the downbeat of um, measure 18 so let's listen to this um, like opus 7 this has that melodic sigh material you know that uh, that figure So you hear that, you know, so it gives you a second phrase. So again, that melodic sigh does the same thing at the end of that second phrase. This then third phrase is parallel to the beginning. Um, and this also is, is parallel. So it's like an A, A prime and then A double prime and A triple prime with two measure extension at the end. Let's listen to this. Second phrase. straightforward. Now he presents then a new thematic idea, but it's still in the key of B flat, so you don't want to call that the B theme. You wait until it is modulating and cadencing in that expected key, so you're expecting dominant key, which would be F major. And one thing that he does here, so he gives you this little semi-phrase um, idea that has a trill. And he, you know, sequences that. It does have, um, you know, a cadence on dominant there. Um, and so it's a 5 of 5 to 5. It's real quick. But what we're going to see in this same passage that comes back after the middle section and you, know, you have a return of the A theme, and then you have the connecting passage to the B theme, that he gives you the same material and the same, but then he gives you an extra two measures that then take you back to B flat. So he doesn't really, um, you know, bring this back in, um, you know, th this same key comes back. We'll, I'll, we'll see what, what I'm talking about when we get there. But at any rate, I wouldn't call this the um, B theme yet. I would wait until you have the real clear cadence here on the downbeat of 32. And that then is some new material, and it's just basically broken chords. But I think this all sounds like it's still modulating, and that's when you arrive uh, clearly on that key. 
When this comes in, then you have just two phrases, uh, the second of which has a, a German sixth, you know, harmony going to a five here, and so the B theme is only two phrases long, and it's parallel period, so it's you know a little one part song form, uh, so half the length of the A theme, um, and so it has a little longer transition, uh, but it's not terribly long, and then this is going to prepare then to take you back to the return, first return of the A, which happens just with those that pickup, you know, um, into the next page, and that then brings back the A theme. So let's listen to this. This is going to be a really important theme. So just, you know, take note that, um, you know, it has that dotted eighth note, and then two thirty-second notes, and eighth notes and so forth. So the rhythm of this, you're going to see this theme come back minus the trill a little bit later. And it, it, so you might not recognize it because it doesn't have the trill, and that's a kind of important feature of it uh, when you first hear it. But uh, nonetheless, that would be related. Um, so here's going to be the uh, transition arriving at the B theme there at 32. touches on F. Still modulating. So it's not clearly in. Still arriving. Here's the arrival point. Okay, and so when it gets to this point, then he is using this material from the opening and using that then as the material to make the retransition to the first return. And he's got then a little bit of imitative writing between the hands, and you hear some things overlapping and so forth. So it's kind of, you know, light, you know, uh, imitative, you know, almost polyphonic texture here for just a moment. It's like a written out of Chalorando. First return. A little bit of chromaticism. Basically, just basically the same as the first time. Here's the extension. So, Caden Song Tonic now. Okay, and it modulated to F minor. All right, so <clears throat> right here immediately it, it shifts to from B flat major then to B flat minor, and that then touches on B flat minor. It goes from B flat minor then to cadence on F minor. And then basically you're going to have um, three sections here in this um, C. Um, and so, you know, what I'm going to call development section. One of the reasons um, that you, you have development, you, the A theme, so you have this, and now what you're going to have in the left hand is the inversion of that, and you're going to have, um, so, so it's related, you know. Um, but it's even more related when you get to this next passage that starts here with the upbeat to 81. And so that's the first passage. This is the second passage here. This passage, I asked on the worksheet, you know, what kind of texture, what term would you use? And a lot of you put, this is polyphonic, which it is. Basically you have two, you know, ideas, you know, one for each hand. 
but you definitely have um, double counterpoint going on and even um, some triple counterpoint going on when you add three voices uh, at the end of this. And so all of this sounds like a fugato passage. So it you know it thins out and you have um, this you know statement of ideas and then they're presented in different voices, you know, with the invertible counterpoint idea with you know changing registers and so forth. So definitely this is polyphonic. And it cadences on B flat minor here. So the first section is in F minor. This section then is going to be in B flat minor. And then this section brings back this section, but it doesn't bring it back in F minor. It brings it back in B flat minor. And it cadences on B flat minor. And so, um, you know, it's not just centered around that one key of F minor, but it's, you know, starts in F minor, but it ends up back in B flat. And so, again, that's another characteristic of a development that it's not just centered basically in one key. Anyway, that's what he does, um, and it takes you to then the retransition to the return of A. At this point, then, he brings back that A theme motive and um, more, and then when it comes back in 112, this has changed quite a bit because the theme now is in the left hand, upper voice of the left hand, uh, for the first two phrases, and then back into the right hand, just like it was at the beginning. Uh, and it's a full return. There's your extension cadence on B flat there. Okay, so we'll listen to this passage. And um, so see if you agree with me that this definitely sounds like a fugato passage. turn. So it's still sounding B-flat minor-ish. G-flat, now when it goes to G-natural, there. Now it sounds like B-flat major. There's your theme in the left hand. Still in the tenor voice. So this then brings back the same transition theme and still has the trill. So it was missing the trill here in this fugato passage, but clearly that's the same motive as that theme is there. And when we heard it the first time, it was just two semi-phrases, so one phrase, uh, but you know this was a sequence, and it touches on F major. It's going to do the same thing here, where it touches on F major, but then he's got an extra semi-phrase where it goes to B flat major, and then he continues along, and this is going to bring back then the B theme at that point in tonic. And one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it brings back both phrases. Um, and then it takes you to this passage at the top of page 212, where you have the A theme. But question is, what is the key there at the top of 212? And so let's listen to all of this passage um, 
then leading up to it, and we'll stop and then talk about that and uh, try to explain what happens. So here we are. This is just like the first time, but now you've got an extra two measures. There you go, that was different. Okay, so it takes you to that, to the return. So there's your A theme. But what's the key? Well, if you look at it closely, it is the key of E flat. And that's not the key that you expect. You expect that to be the um, final return of the theme in B flat and tonic. And so it doesn't stay there very long. He switches then to C minor, and then it gives you this material, which then continues to, to connect to measure 165, and then that is the final return of the theme in tonic. And now it's extremely embellished, so it's now all in triplets. So this passage up here that you don't expect is an episode in E flat major. And um, so once you get to this point of having that dominant pitch, dominant pedal, then that serves as your final retransition to that last statement of A right there. Okay, so we're going to pick it up here. So if you didn't have perfect pitch, you're listening to it without the scores, it, it kind of makes you, you know, it makes you think that this is the return uh, that you were expecting, but it's, it's just in the wrong key. Now C minor. And now heading back to B flat. There's your final return. End of the second phrase. Very embellished. Embellished. Some more chromaticism. Makes it sound very expressive. Okay, so um, this then leads to this uh, coda section, and this is that transition theme. And so again, he is referencing the theme that he developed, and he's just going to present it to you, you know, several times. And the movement ends then with the A theme material in that little imitative uh, passage that you first heard in the, the, the uh, connection after the B theme going to the first return of A. So at any rate, this is going to bring back that transition theme, which is a really important theme in this particular movement. So, uh, uh, you know, pretty, pretty straightforward. You've got that one episode at the end in E flat major, unexpected um, 
statement of the A theme and uh, 